Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service on this fourth Sunday after Trinity. My name is Reverend Nikki Pennington and I'm the priest serving for churches that make up the parish of Cross Laken on the west coast of Cumbria. Every Sunday at 10.30, folks from across our parish and from wider afield join us on Facebook Live to join in our Sunday worship, which we stream from the vicarage, our home. And this morning, I'm joined by my husband, Graham. Each week, we mail out the service order, which contains the hymns, Bible readings and liturgy for this Sunday service. And if you're joining us for the first time and you would like to receive this service order, then please just personally message me or type in a comment on the uh, Facebook page and I will add you to the distribution list. Looking ahead uh, to the week coming, starting this afternoon, we are opening uh, St Paul's Church in Frisington from two till four uh, for people to come in and take some time for private prayer and reflection. So please do come along this afternoon and we were intending to open the church each Sunday afternoon from now on. And then we're going to be continuing our weekly morning prayer on Tuesday mornings at 8.30, which we do on Zoom. Um, you don't necessarily need an internet device. You can join us on a landline telephone. So if you would like to join us, then please do again, just get in touch and we will uh, I'll be in touch with you to let you know how you can join in with this time of morning prayer. So this is a significant weekend. Today marks the 72nd anniversary of the founding of the NHS, an institution that has served us, that we cherish so deeply. And many of us are acutely aware of the heavy load this cherished institution has had to bear in recent months. And this morning we're going to be praying for the NHS in our intercessions. Just to encourage you, at five o'clock across the nation, people are going to be out on their doorsteps, clapping as a token of our deep appreciation for all those who have worked so hard in the National Health Service during the last six months. And this weekend is also significant in terms of a further easing of lockdown measures. As July begins, it is nearly four months, over a hundred days, since people were told to stop going outside and stay in, in order to keep themselves and others safe. We might be beginning to move out again ourselves at this time, returning to work, accessing public places. And if indeed these are days of venturing out for you, it may be strange today to be thinking about the place of rest for the weary, a theme that crops up in our readings today. But I'm wondering whether many of us are feeling that weariness. Weariness of isolation. Weariness of not being able to share with family and friends. Weariness of shouldering anxieties for our loved ones. So in a moment of quiet, as we begin our time of worship, I'd like to invite you to become aware of those things that are making you feel weary today. Those things which are burdening you. And after a moment's silence, we're going to light our candles, a reminder of God's constant presence in times of weariness, pain and struggle.
as we light our candle. Listen to these words from Jesus. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So as we come into God's presence, we trust God receives us just as we are. And we respond to his invitation to bring him our burdens, seeking his refreshing, his tender restoration and renewal of our inner being. And as we worship, so we ask the Holy Spirit to energise our desire to give God the glory. May we be open to receiving all the Spirit has to give us this day. So would you turn to your opening responses? Jesus says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. Amen. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Jesus says, heal the sick, feed the hungry, free the oppressed, watch and pray. Amen. At this time, Lord, we seek to approach you, but we forget it is you who first approaches us. We are the sinners, the tax collectors, the Gentiles of your day. Yet you come to us with your gospel of salvation. We are the slaves enthralled to a world of troubles and care. Yet you come to us and invite us to be yoked to you. You walk with us. You share our burdens. Lord, we seek to move ever closer to you. Come to meet us, we pray, in our worship. Amen. Amen. So we're going to sing our first song this morning, Lord of the Dance. Oh, 
Graham is going to come and do our Bible readings for us this morning. The prayer of the day. Saviour and friend, you call us to lay down our burdens and find rest in a relationship with you. Help us to learn from you how to be gentle and humble of heart, that our burdens may be light. Amen. And the prayer for illumination. For the word of God in, in Jesus, Jesus, for, for God's, God's wisdom all around us, us for God's word and wisdom in us, us. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. And the Bible readings today. The first reading is taken from the letter to the Romans, chapter 7. I don't know what I'm doing because I don't know what I want to do. Instead, I do the thing that I hate. But if I'm doing the thing that I don't want to do, I'm agreeing that the law is right. But now I'm not doing the one, I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it's sin that lives in me. I know that good doesn't live in me, that is, in my body. The desire to do good is inside of me, but I can't do it. I don't do the good that I want to do, but I do the evil that I don't want to do. But if I do the very thing that I don't want to do, then I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it is sin that lives in me that is doing it. So I find that, as a rule, when I want to do what is good, evil is right there with me. I gladly agree with the law on the inside, but I see a different law at work in my body. It wages a war against the law of my mind and takes me prisoner with the law of sin that is in my body. I'm a miserable human being. Who will deliver me from this dead corpse? Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I'm a slave to God's law in my mind, but I'm a slave to sin's law in my body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And the Gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 11. To what will I compare this generation? It is like a child sitting in the marketplaces, calling out to others. We played the flute for you, and you didn't dance. We sang a funeral song, and you didn't mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. Yet the human one came eating and drinking, and they say, Look! a glutton and a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved to be right by her works. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have shown them to babies. Indeed, Father, this brings you happiness. My Father has handed all things over to me. No one knows the Son except the Father, and nobody knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wants to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Put on my yoke and learn from me. I'm gentle and humble. And you will find rest for yourselves. My yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ.
loving God, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. What makes you feel weary? On Friday, I led an act of worship with the children in our Church of England school at Montreal. And I asked them that very question. What makes you feel weary? There were numerous answers. So many, I couldn't pick them up. Technology was struggling to cope. Many of the answers focused on things that make us feel physically tired. But then we moved on to think about the weariness we feel on the inside. The weariness of adapting to new ways of doing things. For the children, new ways of doing school, new ways of being with friends, of seeing family and loved ones. I don't know about you, but it feels like we are standing on shifting sand in these days, constantly having to adjust our balance so that we can remain upright. As children and adults, we may be feeling weary of living with the loss of things we used to do. Maybe we're feeling weary of shouldering worries for loved ones that we haven't been able to see or support in the ways that we used to. Weariness at managing the uncertainty as the future unfolds and the full impact of the economic recession comes closer to home. The weariness of living in these liminal times, wondering when we will ever feel like the future is more predictable, more certain. The reading from our gospel we've just heard showcases another type of weariness, that of living up to other people's expectations, especially when those expectations are unrealistic or constantly changing. I guess we'll all have had experiences of failing to meet someone's expectations, be that a teacher, a friend, a parent, an employer. In our gospel reading, Jesus, with forensic attention, exposes the confused and contradictory expectations of the crowd. What are these people like, he says? They're like children who bicker about the games they're playing. It seems as if you're never satisfied, he says. You criticise John the Baptist for fasting and not drinking alcohol. And then you criticise me because I enjoy supper and a drink of wine with friends. But you are totally missing the point, he says. Look at what God is doing through me. That's what matters, what God is doing. In the epistle reading, we come across another source of weariness. The weariness that comes from the expectations we place upon ourselves. Possibly the hardest of all expectations to meet. I can still recall the powerful sense of relief when I read that passage we heard earlier in Romans for the very first time. It seemed that at last someone was able to articulate the struggle that I was having. This is how Eugene Peterson phrases Paul's words in the message version of the Bible. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things I absolutely despise. I know the law, but I still can't keep it. And if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, then I obviously need help. I realise I don't have what it takes. I can will it, 
but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and it gets the better of me every single time. Have you ever felt like this? I know I have. Totally frustrated at the end of your personal salvation project. Often it's only when we get to this point of utter exasperation with ourselves that we're then ready to open up to our desperate need for grace. Lutheran pastor Nadia Boltz Weber defines grace like this. God's grace is not defined as God being forgiving to us even though we sin. Grace is when God is a source of wholeness which makes up for my failings. For my failings hurt me and others and even the planet and God's grace to me is that my brokenness is not the final word. It's that God makes beautiful things out of even my own rubbish. It's God saying, I love the world too much to let your sin define you and be the final word. I am a God who makes all things new. Paul in his letter goes on to talk about the release that we can experience when we're prepared to lay down those heavy loads we carry, the expectations we try and meet, the attempts to control and shape the world so that it looks more like what we'd like it to be like, the ways we fret and fuss about things that are beyond our control, laying all that down and simply standing naked in God's presence knowing that God sees us in our entirety and loves us in our totality. And as we do this, we realise afresh that this is the love that loved us into being. This is the love that will love us into the fullness of life. No amount of chiding or chastening will save us, for that will only add to the burdens we seem determined to carry. Rather, Jesus says, come to me. Are you tired? Worn out? Come to me, and I will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. For I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live lightly and freely. In these days of uncertainty, instability, conflicting expectations, constant change and continual adaptation, can we hear this gracious, life-giving message and respond? Can we open ourselves and receive life as an unforced rhythm of grace? Come to me, says Jesus and I will give you rest. I'd like to play you a song from the Wild Goose Company, a song inspired by our Bible reading this morning. And as you listen to the words, may you find within you a heart to respond to Christ's invitation. Thank you. 
you will find rest for your souls. respond to Christ's invitation in the words of our confession. Lord, Lord we, we like, like to think, think of ourselves, ourselves as self-reliant. We, we don't, don't need, need anybody's help. help. Though, Though the furrow be long and the going tough, we, we will plow it alone. This is what is admired in this world, Lord. Pride and self-sufficiency, never giving in. But you see that this is the way of slavery. You offer us a different yoke, and we confess that we barely understand it. For your yoke is light and easy, a balm to our shoulders, and a lightening of our load. We confess the need of your help, your guidance, and we fall into step with you. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of our faith. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, showing compassion to all. So may God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Let us stand and say our response, our affirmation of faith. We believe and trust in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and who works in us and others by the power of the Spirit. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect for creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. 
Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Amen. Amen. And so our second hymn, a joyous celebration of the freeing power of God's love in our lives. The Spirit lives to set us free. establishment of the National Health Service, for the life and work whose vision shaped its birth and growth, and for the de- dedication of all who work in it. Give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who care for the sick, and your wisdom to those engaged in me- medical research. Strengthen all in their vocation through your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear us. us. We give thanks for all who provide leadership in healthcare, for those who exercise stewardship and allocate resources, and pray that in challenging times, support and compassion may be shown to those most in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who promote health and well-being in policy and practice. For all who care for the sick in hospital, in care homes and at home. For doctors, nurses, care assistants, cleaners. We seek guidance and strength for all chaplains and for all engaged in teaching and medical research. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear us. We pray for those who suffer in mind and spirit, for those who are terminally ill, those who are elderly or frail, for all who live with a disability or are in constant pain, and for the many who strive to bring comfort and healing to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear us. Remember in your kingdom, O Lord, all those who have faithfully served here on earth and are now at rest. 
grant us with them and with all the faithful departed the joy of your salvation. We commend ourselves and all whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus has come into the world to bring peace with God that the world cannot provide. Let us receive and share this precious gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so we take a moment to write a peace greeting to one another in the comments at the bottom of the Facebook Live video. And we do so we'll listen to an anthem for the day. blessing. May the God who feels compassion for all lead you to find love in your life and the peace that comes from living with a gentle and humble heart. May the gentleness of Christ restore your hope. The power of the Holy Spirit set you free and the blessing of God Almighty Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be with you this day and always. 
Amen. So as we leave our time of worship, may you grow to know the yoke that is easy and the burden that is light, which Christ offers you. And in turn, may you become rest for those who are weary and heavy laden. So we close with our sending responses. God to enfold us. God, God to, to surround, surround us. us. God in our sleeping. God, God in, in our waking. waking. God in our watching. God, God in, in our, our hoping. hoping. God on our lips. God in our lives. Blessings upon you and may you know God's peace as you go on and into this coming week. And we look forward to worshipping with you again, maybe on a Tuesday if you uh, would like to join us with morning worship. Um, if not, we will meet again next Sunday at 10.30 on Facebook Live.